Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is my class on guitar amplification and effects. This class explores the fields of acoustics, electromagnetics, electronic circuits, device physics, and signal and system theory through the specific platform of the electric guitar and its commonly associated amplifiers and effects devices. The distinctions between these tools begins to break down, since amplifiers are often deliberately driven to distortion as an effect, and in the hands of a skilled and thoughtful player, the various effects pedals musicians often employ may be better thought of as part of the complete instrument. The guitars, amplifiers, and effects explored in this course are not just intriguing motivational examples of traditional electrical and computer engineering topics. I feel that they are technological and cultural artifacts worthy of study in their own right in the spectrum of systematic musicology. They are part of our history. I believe that Jimi Hendrix, wrestling his fuzz-faced Stratocaster in front of his Marshall amplifier stack, was a transcendent example of a cyber-physical system, a beautifully unstable feedback loop of sweat, circuitry, and sound. The general idea of this class is that it covers everything that goes into your guitar tone, starting with the strings and ending with the speakers. And in between, we're going to spend a lot of time looking at amplifier circuits that employ vacuum tube technology. The material in this class is obviously useful if you want to build or repair your own amplifiers, or even design your own amplifiers from scratch. But it's also essential knowledge if you want to write digital signal processing algorithms that emulate tube amplifiers that could run on standalone hardware or run in a plug-in for a digital audio workstation. The last third of the class is going to look at analog circuitry for effects pedals. Like with the amplifiers, this knowledge can be useful for building, repairing, and designing analog effects pedals, but it can also provide inspiration for DSP algorithms. As far as prerequisites go, I'm going to assume that you've seen some basic single transistor amplifiers, either BJTs or MOSFETs or JFETs, along the lines of what's usually covered near the end of ECE 3040. Notice we won't be needing all of the super complicated device physics from 3040. In particular, I need you to have seen the idea of biasing a transistor circuit and the idea of small signal analysis. I also included a signals and systems class as a prereq, although I really don't need most of this material. I just need you to be familiar with the idea of a frequency response and the idea of poles and zeros of a filter on a pole zero plot, and Laplace domain circuit analysis, but nothing particularly fancy. We're just going to replace the S variable with J omega to get a frequency response, but we're not going to be inverting Laplace transforms or doing anything overly complicated. Now, if you're somebody from the wider community watching these videos on YouTube, and a good portion of what I just talked about sounded mysterious, don't worry about it. Stick around, watch the videos anyway. Even if you don't get every detail, you'll still pick up a few interesting tidbits along the way. There is no required textbook for this class, since there's no one textbook that covers everything I want to cover. And for that matter, some of what I'm going to show you isn't in any textbook that I'm aware of, or any papers. It's stuff I figured out on my own. I have collected quite a few books about tubes. A lot of these, as you might guess, are pretty old, and these really old ones are very difficult to read. The nomenclature, the way schematics are drawn, and even just basic philosophies about how to think about circuits would seem very alien to a modern electrical engineering student. As far as modern books go, I highly recommend all of these books by Richard Kuno. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably not. Anyway, I probably relied on this book about the Fender Baseman more than any other reference that I used. And although, as the title suggests, it is specifically a case study on this amp, the general principles described in the book are applicable to any guitar amp. And this book, Electronics for Guitarists by Denton Daly, is a nice technical overview of a variety of relevant topics. Although the focus of this class is on guitar amplifiers, the underlying principles are also applicable to high-fidelity amplifiers and some high-end recording gear such as microphone preamplifiers, equalizers, and compressors. 
I'll be putting all of my lectures for this class in this guitar amplification and effects playlist, and I hope you enjoy the course.